Good day fellow investors, I hope you feel great today because today I'm going to share with you some news, a piece of information that's going to rock your world and I bet you that you haven't heard such good news in this year or even in the last five years. I even put a tie for the special location. But we'll do that at the end. First with the overview, what are we going to speak about today? Bitcoin and Wall Street. Wall Street is getting interested in Bitcoin. Very interesting story that will describe how the stock market and financial market and Wall Street work. Secondly, I want to discuss a little bit base metals and inventories. If you look at inventories, they tell a lot of the story in comparison to the hype that's going on with supposed higher demand from electric vehicles. Then some short news from China with opening up their financial markets. Brexit and the consequences of Brexit and what's going on in Europe, just a little bit, and then I'll finish with the most important news, information, anything that I have shared on this channel since it started. Let's immediately start with Bitcoin. At the beginning of last week, Bitcoin hit 7,000 as Wall Street interests get real. Why is Wall Street interested in Bitcoin? Because Wall Street is always looking for new vehicles to make money. Wall Street lives off fees, so if they can make a product, do something, sell it to you and get a fee, that's their bloodline, that's their lifeline, that's their oxygen, the fee, not the value creation. And now they're even starting to create Bitcoin or cryptocurrency ETFs, again, for the fee, not for the value, doesn't matter. You're the one making the decision according to Wall Street, so be very careful when dealing with such things. Plus, there is a link in the description below that shows Jack Bogle discussing ETFs and how ETFs are not good for investors because the market, just simple plain index funds, have beaten all ETFs in the last 10 years. So be very careful about that when you invest in ETFs. Further on, the Bitcoin. This summer I was driving through Slovenia and on a gas station they were selling bitcoins. There were five screens selling bitcoins. I went to their web page and you can see here how a normal gas station in Slovenia is selling bitcoins. If we look at the trend of bitcoin search in Google, you can see how it really spiked in the last year alongside the spike in prices. But if you look at where the bitcoin is mostly researched is Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Slovenia and Estonia. Those countries that I mentioned are famous for their stable financial systems, stable currencies, and where people never, never, ever got involved into pyramid schemes and all other get-rich-quick schemes. Never happened there. So very interesting how those countries are the most interested in the Bitcoin. Further, November 7, this is very funny, Goldman Sachs sees Bitcoin at 8,000. With this means that they have a product, they want to sell it, and then there is an analyst that says, oh, this is going to happen, the minimum target, third wave, five waves, up, blah, 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 8,000 is the target. What happened two days later, the Bitcoin went down to below 7,000. Oops, Goldman, not such a good analysis. Okay, what happened, I don't care, but it's just so fun to see how that worked. Nevertheless, Wall Street wants to make money. Looking at it from a long-term perspective, this is an excellent chart that shows past financial market bubbles. And you can see the top market bubble is the tulip mania in the 1600s in the Netherlands. In 1637 to 1639, two years, something similar to what's going on in the Bitcoin, the Netherlands became crazy for, for tulip bulbs because you could buy one, at a million guilders and sell it next year, four of them for four million guilders. And everybody was so crazy that one tulip bulb was worth as a house in Amsterdam. A year later, somebody said, wrote a paper, people, it's just tulip bulbs and you just use it for decoration in your home. And then the market crashed and some people lost their houses. If we go back at the chart, we can see the appreciation of the Bitcoin, similar to what happened to tulips, similar to the Mississippi bubble, and similar to smaller bubbles like the South Sea bubble, the US stock bubble, Great Depression, real estate and whatever, are peanuts in comparison to what's going on with the Bitcoin. As you can see here, as fast as it goes up, 
so fast it will go down. Now the second part of the news is about base metals and nickel, copper and so. I have some exposure to those, those stocks, we have discussed those stocks, so it's important to follow what's going on. And if we look at the London Metal Exchange inventories, we can see how copper inventories have been volatile, however nickel inventories are still extremely high and this is keeping nickel prices depressed. To see real nickel prices rise, we will have to see these inventories go up. In addition, Indonesia has authorized more exports of nickel or Philippines starting mining in order to make more money from the craze in nickel as they expect more nickel to be demanded due to electric vehicles and more steel demand from developing Asia, which is logical. Nevertheless, it's very important to know that there are two types of nickel, nickel used in making steel and nickel used for batteries. So if you're invested, look at what kind of nickel is your miner producing. However, until these inventories are so high, expect volatility in the price. Don't expect a strong rise in trends. When we see demand higher than supply and this inventory level lower, then it's time to really dig deeper into nickel. Just a quick note on China makes historic move to open financial markets for financial firms. So China inflow of capital, very good news, good news for companies like UPI or bad news because they're going to see competition, but somebody is going to take them over. But that's just speculation. Nevertheless, opening China trade agreements, opening to the world, that's always very, very good news, especially for the long term, because these things evolve over the long term. Now, there is a lot of talk about taxes, lowering taxes in the US, but the first thing I want to mention is that in economics, there is no free lunch. If you give more to somebody, you're taking away from somebody else. So the real impact of lowering taxes won't be seen that fast, because somewhere that money goes. There is no way that that money disappears. It just depends where it goes and who gets it. If taxes on corporations get lower and the market already expects that, because we have had the previous eight weeks with the market just going up, as everybody expected, lower taxes, that will lead to higher earnings. Last week was a bit of turmoil because that isn't going to happen that fast. And then consequently lower taxes, higher margins will attract more competition. So some companies will lower their prices in order to gain more market share. So don't take at face value the lower taxes. It will help, but it will help temporarily increasing stock market prices. In the long term, it increases the competitivity of a country, but I wonder if the US need more increases in competitivity. They give a lot of infrastructure, skilled workforce, everything, good legal system, a great market, so it's a great place to have a business. They should charge for it. So it's interesting, I'm no tax specialist, and I think nobody is a tax specialist because nobody knows what will be the impact of a tax move now 10 years from now. That's just guessing. So be careful with what's going on in taxes. It's fun to watch. We'll see what will be the effect. That's the only thing we can know. Further on the Brexit, Brexit talks resume with European Union wary of political risk. If we look at what's happened with the pound since the Brexit discussion, then the vote, and now that Brexit real talks started, we can see how the pound crashed. And this has led to some negative consequences, because car sales in the UK have also fallen, which means that imports are getting more expensive. So we'll see how this ends up, but what's very important in, is to see how the European Union is going to position itself towards the Brexit, because it's going to create a precedent towards other countries that might want that might want to leave the EU in the future. The European economy is doing fine now, thanks to negative interest rates. If you just look at the interest rates in Europe, it's crazy how negative they are. And also I'll show you just the Italian interest rate is so low that it's incredible that Italy with a debt to GDP ratio of 120 can borrow at negative interest rates. So it's a clearly distorted market, which leads to a distorted economy, which leads to an unsustainable situation. When these things reverts, I want to see how will the politics of Europe continue. Will 
it strengthen? Will it manage to solve its issues or, or it will disintegrate? Therefore, it's important to see what's going on in, with the Brexit, how will Europe deal with it, and what will be the terms? Because later those terms will be applied also to other countries. And then we'll see who will win, who will lose. A lot of populism. Now it's not so in to be a populist, but when there will be the next recession, it will be very, very popular. So be careful about how do you position yourself in the long term again. Now, to the most important piece of information you'll ever get. I copied this from Jack Bogle. The link is again when he, where he talks about ETFs in the description below, but I want to stress this because it's so important. According to statistics, our average life, if we are well-educated, investing in stocks, doing everything like having a job, leading a healthy life, we will hit approximately 100 years. Where I live, everybody lived a good life and I see a lot of people 90, 100 years. My hair guy is about 82, still grinding, still working. So if you are 30, you still have 70 investing years. If you are 20, you have 80 investing years. If you are 50, you have 50 investing years. That's a huge amount of time. Imagine what the world looked like 50, 80 years ago. And then fast forward and you will still be alive. So it's easy to get distracted by short-term moves, stocks going up. I want stocks to go up, but but in reality, we should be happy when stocks go down. Because over 80 years, you don't care if the stock market goes up and down. The only thing you care is to accumulate more and more parts of businesses. Rich people don't own stocks, they own businesses. And if stock prices are higher, you are accumulating little smaller parts of those businesses. So the best situation, and now I say something that's contradictory, but it's true. The best situation for me and for most of my viewers, because the average age is about 35, would be a stock market crash now and then a price earnings ratio of 5 for about 10, 15, 20 years. And then again, lower interest rates and a price earnings ratio of 15. But the 20 years of low stock prices would allow us to accumulate and reinvest the dividends and create huge amounts of wealth. So really think about this. The next time you want to buy a stock and it goes up 1%, 2% or it is up 10, 20% in the last year, then you say, oh, I'm too late, I missed the train. Think about it that your train, your investment train is going to ride for another 50, 60, 70, 80 years with some of you that are 20 years old or even more. So really put that into the perspective of investing. And too often we miss that long-term perspective when we invest and we chase short-term trends. That's completely normal. As humans, we are wired to go for immediate gratification instead of long-term, long-lasting gratification. Because who knows what will be 10, 15 years ago. However, those 10, 15 years will co come very fast. So think about it, extremely important. It will make a huge difference over the long term. If you can, keep that long term focus in whatever you do. And have fun, of course, in the short term. Enjoy your life. Nevertheless, just position yourself, tweak a bit your life so that it builds up, builds up over the next 80 years. Thank you for watching. I hope you like the news. Click like. Share your comments. I want to see how you think. I love reading them. I love answering to them. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.